Well, 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 we're back on this screen again, and uh, Brian Loudrup believes that St Johnson will have no real chance of avoiding relegation uh, unless his squad is heavily strengthened. And once again, I prove him wrong. I don't know what it is. Either I'm really good at managing this team, or he's just really bad at judging um, players' potential and ability and all that. I mean, it's got him judging player's ability at 17, so he must be pretty good. So let's just say he's he's doing his job properly and to the best of his ability. That must mean then that I'm good. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, welcome back. This is uh, Football Manager 2005. We're in Season 5 of my playthrough here with uh, St. Johnston FC, who are, of course, my favourite team. So the season 2008-2009 has happened. We finished fifth. I will direct your attention to the top of the league, where Aberdeen managed to win the league. But as far as the squad goes, we'll get into games in a minute, as far as the squad goes, it's... There's a bit of a, I don't know, a bit of a weird dynamic going on. Now, I know squad dynamics, team dynamics have only been added in the 2018 version. Well, there just seems to be a real shift in the dynamic of this team. This team has, okay, I have made a lot of transfers uh, over the last few seasons, but by and large, a lot of the core members have remained the same for, let's say, the best part of four years, even five years. There's players in this squad that have been here for all five years that have been here. People like Ross Forsyth, Kevin Cuthbert, Ryan Stevenson, sorry. People like that, they've been in for five years. But the backbone's been pretty much the same. But we're starting to see a shift. I'll go into that in more detail, but basically, as you can see, some contracts are ending. Uh, Jason Scotland's is one of them. I hate to say this, but let's see, where is it? Yeah, here. Scottish Players Player of the Year. Jason Scotland. Uh, Young Player of the Year doesn't matter. Oh yeah, Jason Scotland and Alan Gow got Team of the Year. Scottish Football Writers Player of the Year. Jason Scotland. Oh, and I, I came third in Manager of the Year, by the way, but that's uh, irrelevant. Also, top goal scorer, Jason Scotland. He's come in the top two for goal scorers in the last three seasons. Uh, of course, he came second to Gary O'Connor last year by like a single goal and got 31 in his debut season for us. He got 24 this year. But, as I said, he is contract shutting out. Can I offer him a new contract? No, I have offered him a contract. I offered him basically everything at max. Maximum wage, maximum signing on fee, assist bonus, goal bonus, that sort of thing. So hopefully it accepts, but I highly doubt it. Uh, the teams that want him are, of all teams, Celtic and uh, Rangers. So he is 30, so he's kind of coming into the twilight of his career. But even still, at 30 years old, scoring 26 goals, 24 in the league, 11 assists, 8 man of the match awards, that is phenomenal. He's a sort of player that any team in the league would want. Even look, even Celtic Rangers are after him. But alas, we're probably going to have to let him go. He's not even one of the highest earners. Uh, Zoltan Kiss, he is also going to be leaving on a free transfer. He has to be transfer listed. I accept it. I usually accept these days just because I want to make them feel like they've got some power, which in this case Zoltan Kiss actually does, uh, and I can't offer him a new contract. Um, I'm not sure if this is because he's transfer listed, but I think it's because he just wants to go. Like, he got Football Players Player of the Year or whatever last year as well, so that's two of our key players that are probably going to be moving on. He is 28, he's still at his peak, he's still performing well, but unfortunately, and also he's a full international, look at that. When he came to Saints, he only had like one cap, now he's got nine in one goal, so he's done well. Unfortunately, we're probably going to lose those people. And there's various other issues with players that are is floating about the squad. Having said that, you would barely notice that there's a shift in the dynamics because, as you can see, morale is superb by and large. Uh, we were undefeated in our last five games. In fact, I think our last six games, maybe. And we finished at the top half of the table. If we'd won a few more games, could have finished third. It, it's that close. But we did improve on last year's a uh, sixth place finish and we got more uh, more points so that's always pleasing let's have a look at the uh, top performers then well who played the most games this season well as you can see Jason Scotland is far out in front 
having the most appearances. Alan Gow also played a lot, so did Gary Brady, Scott Wilson. They were the mainstays. The goalkeeper was an interesting situation. I started with Alan Maness because he's obviously got the best stats and everything. He's done really well in the last couple of years. I think yeah, he's been here t three years now. This is his third year. However, he just had a really bad run of games at the start of the season. I swapped him out with Kevin Cuthbert. Kevin Cuthbert didn't do that well. Craig Sampson was my third choice keeper. He ended up becoming my first choice keeper. I played him in uh, 29 games, 26 in the league. He got 10 clean sheets, which was amazing. And yeah, he's just proved himself to be uh, my number one. So good on him. Having said that, he, was, he wasn't inconsistent, but he would have the odd game where he would let in like three or four, which was kind of annoying. But by and large, he was all right. And that's why he was number one. So, uh, top appearance, uh, top average rating, sorry, Jason Scotland is obviously right at the very top, 7.72, he got the Players Player of the Year and the Writers Player of the Year, which was good. He's just a really good player and it is really, really, I don't think I've ever been this sad to lose a player in Football Manager before, but genuinely he is the heartbeat of this team often. Is is it one bad team? I don't think so, but he certainly is a, uh, plays a big part. Second place in average rating uh, with 7.3 is Andrew Davies. He, I signed him from Middlesbrough at the start of the season. See, I brought him in on a free. He'd not done so well in his previous few games, so I thought it was a bit of a gamble, but as you can see, his stats are pretty good. So I played him at the start of the season, but he was getting really, really low ratings and I thought that is really annoying. He wanted to go, he was unhappy, he was on five grand a week. However, I left him out the team for a while. He only played 25 games and that's because I left him out the team for a period in the season and then eventually I integrated him again and he started performing consistently. So much so that as you can see, no sixes. No sixes, sevens, eights, even a nine. He did really, really well. Good player. I'm glad he's on our team. And Nielsen, another new signing. Uh, he was signed on a free from Killy. Now, he actually hadn't played that well for Killy, so I thought, this is probably a pretty big gamble. But I signed him anyway, and he turned out to be all right. Played 27 games, five assists, a goal. Uh, got a good average rating. I played him mainly in defensive midfield or in the centre of midfield, and he did really well. So it's a privilege to have him. He's contract isn't that high or his wages isn't that high so that's pretty good then we've got scott wilson uh he's back for his what third year fourth year of his career saints career he did pretty well got 7.2 average rating uh played 32 games he, he did all right can't really complain about his uh, his form although he played in 32 games he wasn't a mainstay like he didn't play every game there was some games i left about because there was other center backs doing well or he wasn't performing quite to standard then we've got gary brady as you can see he got a 7.15 he did really really well unfortunately he's on he is on the decline he's 32 now He's been at Saints for, this is his fourth year. He's just been very consistent throughout his Saints career, so it's really good to have him. And he played 31, 33 games of the season, so that was pretty good. He did well. Next up, we've got Alan Gow, the Heart of Midlothian reject. So this is his second season with us. He played in 34 games, got 10 goals, 8 assists, 7.15 average rating. He's 26, so he's only hopefully going to get better, I say, as I see his finishing stat declining there. But no, he did really well. Really happy to have him. And he's a very versatile player. He can play in the centre of midfield. He can play in the hole. He can play up front. I played him a lot up front this season, which is probably why he's got a better goal tally than last year. Now for this player, Patrick Babatindi Ogunsoto, who is from Nigeria. He's a very interesting player. So you've got 7.12 average rating, 12 goals, 8 assists. Pretty good. Okay, not as many as Jason Scotland, but at least he's scoring and he's a striker, so... That's what you would hope. Uh, he's a new signing. Got him on a free after he left this team in Greece. Uh, so he's on a high wage. I think he's on like five grand. Now he's contracted for another year, but he's very unhappy as you can see. Uh, hoping to leave the club in the near future. Feels he's been treated unfairly. Dislikes you. So he dislikes me. Part of the reason for that is because I gave him a warning for a bad performance. Maybe twice. I definitely did it once, uh, but maybe twice. And unfortunately, he didn't take to it too well, which is very unfortunate because he's a decent striker. But yeah, I, I don't understand how that's unfair. You know, he played badly. I just said, you know, you played badly. Take this as a warning. And no, suddenly he goes, he takes the right skadgy and dislikes me for that one thing. I mean, I played him in 33 games of the season. What more does he want anyway so that's one player that's kind of unhappy then we've got Zoltan Kiss seven point oh well, seven average rating two goals four assists maybe not quite as prolific as in previous years but still a steady player and one I would be unhappy to get rid of as I said now we've got this guy Keith Keane 
He is a new signing. Signed him for 55000 from Luton Town. Uh, I signed him as a right back and then realised his marking and tackling wasn't that good. So I thought, oh, well, I can play him in the centre midfield. He's got good passing, good mentals, his stamina is good. And then for most of the season, I ended up playing him at right back anyway because his stamina allowed him to get up and down the line fairly uh, rapidly, fairly often. So yeah, 7 average rating. Did pretty well. Steady player. Next we've got Stephen Brennan. He was another new signing, this time from uh, Brighton. Signed him for 28,000. 7 average rating. Plays about right back. He only played in 18 games of the season. He started as first choice and then just fell out of favour. And I went with Keane instead. Uh, there wasn't any particular reason for that. I don't think he played badly necessarily, but I mean, he did play a fair amount, so, and he did all right, so no worries there. Now for this guy, this guy's a really interesting character. Fodil Hadaj, had, has, 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 that guy from Algeria. I do apologise, but I'm not good at pronouncing those names. So I signed him late last season for, on a free, I think. Yeah, I signed him on a free. He was originally playing in Algeria, uh, and somehow he got work permit. Has he been capped? Oh, he has been capped, so that's why he got a work permit. Then, before he'd even joined us, while he was still playing for his original club, he was injured for six months of the season, which was devastating. He was coming in in late August, and I thought, bro, he'll come in in late August. Yes, he'll miss a few games, but hopefully I can use him for the majority of the season. No chance. Out injured until uh, New Year. And then he got unhappy because he wasn't getting played. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't play you because uh, you're injured. So I sent it back to Algeria for a month. He came back, recovered from his injury, and I started playing him a bit, but not too much. But then, as you can see, he gets injured again for three weeks, doesn't get played, get and then falls unhappy again. As you can see, hoping to leave the club in the near future, uh, unhappy with his manager, wants clarification on his role. Okay, used in squad rotation system. Is that not clarification in Enough. I signed him as an important first team player, but I couldn't use him as that because he always got injured. So very, very frustrating character, but he did get a 7 average rating, 3 assists, and a man of the match award, which got him in the starting lineup for the year after, uh, the, the week after. He's a decent player, but he just has an attitude problem. So there's another element of this whole dynamics thing that I'm speaking about. He's just you know, it hasn't affected the team much, which is good, like the squads. We've still been able to perform, but anyway, he was a good player. I played him mainly in central midfield, although I did occasionally play him as a defensive midfielder when I used such formations. Then after that, it's players I didn't play an awful lot. Ben Burgess, I uh, played him in... 25 games. He got six goals, three assists. Not too bad. A lot of those were penalties. One of the other players I want to draw attention to is Greg Shields. Now, he had a bad game, as you can see. He scored a five. I warned him. I gave him a warning. And once again, he got unhappy. So, or not once again, but similar to uh, one of the other players, he got unhappy. It was just a warning. It wasn't a fine. But anyway, he's 32 now. He's probably getting a bit older. Well, he is getting a bit older. Not sure I'll stick with him. He's only got a year left on his contract, so I might try and ship him out. We signed this guy, Chris Burke, from Rangers for 70,000. Uh, he's not played that much. Only seven games. Problem is, he hasn't played that well. His off-the-ball stat is pretty bad. But he's contracted here for another three years, so hopefully he can... Uh, contribute when it matters. This guy was an interesting one. I signed I signed Georgios Constanti. Uh, he's a Cyprian who's been capped quite a bit. He was playing for, is that a Cyprus team? No, that's a Greek team. So he was playing in Greece, signed him as a left back because I needed cover for uh, Ross Forsyth, although Ross Forsyth ended up playing most of the season. This guy got 22 games, didn't play amazingly well. He would have, look at that, he got a 2 and then he got a 4. Look, that is just incredible. See, he barely played the second half of the season. I mean, he did get a 7 rating against Rangers, but I just barely played him because he had a run of really bad form. Anyway, I might play more next season, but he is, he should be a good player. He signed up for another year at least on two grand a week. But that was another one of our new signings. Now, the reason I signed this guy was because Inverness Cali were expressing an interest in Lee Wilkie, who was my current first-choice centre-back. I, I thought I could get a lot of money for him. So I thought, I'll sign this guy, Phil Cave. Signed him on, was that free? Signed him on a free. He was originally at Newcastle. Signed him on a free. He's not amazing because his jumping... Well, he played well. 6.86 isn't bad. He played in 14 games. But his jumping isn't amazing, concentration, kind of meh. Now I signed him because I thought Lee Wilkie was going to go. It turned out I had way too many centre-backs. And then, out of absolutely nothing, Inverness came in with a 950 grand bid. Almost a million pounds for Lee Wilkie. So I was like, stuff it, take the money and run. <laughs> so I sold Lee Wilkie to Cali. He's contracted there for another year. He's done alright at Cali, to be fair. Although Cali haven't done alright. 
as you can see, finished second bottom. So Lee Wilkie went out and I basically had a ready-made replacement in the form of Phil Cave. So that was good. So that's all my new signings. That's my squad. Wish to draw your attention to the reserve squad. Wanjo is probably going to leave. Another player that's going to be heading out, unfortunately, is Alan Mahood. Uh, quite sad. He's been here since the very beginning. Very, very good performer for the first four years. He hasn't played that much this season and hasn't played well. His stats are on the decline, even though it says they're not. They really are. But yeah, he'll be heading out uh, in a month or so when his contract runs out. So a bit of a shame, but he is 36. And he's not going to get many games, if any, next season. And a few of these players that are away on loan, I'm going to get rid of them. Like Craig Galloway, his contract's up. He's not progressed that well. Although he has played well on loan at Wraith. Same with Stephen McDonald. He hasn't played too well at Dundee. But look at his stats. Like, they're not that good. I mean, night tackling at 90, that's good. But everything else, pretty shambolic. And yet, teams seem to be interested in him. Played really well in the Premier League on loan at Dunfermline. Uh, last year, but hasn't played well in the first division or the second division, so I, I don't know what to do with him. I'm probably just going to let him go. He's on like 220, 230 a week, so yeah, I'll probably just let him go. And same with some of these under 19 players. So that's the issue here. Uh, some of my players are happy, some of my best performing players are going to be leaving. Uh, against my will, but there's not much I can do. They, they've got a right to leave under freedom of contract. I signed him literally just before recording this. Aaron Lennon, in real life, has obviously been a good Premier League player. I signed him actually for, yeah, 750 grand. I had £1 million, I kid you not, I had £1 million lying in my transfer kitty for the entire season that was left over from the Lee Wilkie transfer. And I hadn't used it. I thought, right, I'm going to get my transfer budget in a few weeks for the new season. They'll probably cut a lot of it out. I thought, I need to spend some of that. So I went out and purchased Aaron Lennon. Is it a good shout? Not sure. He hasn't played that well for his last few clubs. Uh, but his stats are all right. I think I could get him playing, although I'm not really sure. But he's also very versatile. He can play all across midfield. And he's also only 22. And he's an, an England under-21 international. So hopefully... All that adds up to being he'll be alright. And there's one or two other players coming, hopefully coming to the team, but I'm not too sure, honestly. That'll be for next season. So, uh, let's have a look at the games, shall we? So the pre-season friendlies this year went really, really well. Uh, we beat Dumbarton, we beat Plymouth, we beat uh, Lil, 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 we beat Exeter, and we beat Bristol Rovers. So good results there. I'll show you the scoring in some of the games. We we beat Plymouth away, which was fantastic. We were absolutely battered in the first half. And then Kevin Miller came and scored two goals. He's a player that will probably leave the club as well because he's on a high wage and he's not done anything this season. He scored one goal and that's it. But yeah, we beat Plymouth away. Uh, we then beat Lyle in... F well, they came to us. Alan Gowan, Kirk Broadfoot got the goals there. We beat Exeter away from home, which was pretty good. And then we beat Bristol Rovers. Uh, away from home as well so three wins in England which is well it's kind of rare because usually when you play lower league English opposition they batter you which they did but we won so whatever anyway then the season started and yeah season went got off to the worst possible start 5-0 we lost 5-0 to Celtic don't want to go into any depth but yeah as you can tell it was a bat a battering then it was time for the UEFA Cup uh, or well nowadays it's called the Europa League it's called the Euro Cup and game we're playing Dnipro who are Ukrainian uh, they were a pretty decent outfit I thought they would have been slightly below the level of Celtic but not by much so they were better than us and so it proved they thrashed us 3-0 uh, away from home in the first leg not much to be said about that although Howard Webb was the referee which is pretty cool we then went back to league duty and we lost 3-0 to Hearts which was absolutely fantastic not much to be said there uh, no goals so at this point we're on minus 8 goal difference after 2 games plus we lost 3-0 to Dnipro in the UEFA Cup which was fantastic we then turned it around managed to beat Rangers 1-0 uh, Jason Scotland scored after 4 minutes and we hung on for the rest of the game which was good managed to get the 3 points there next it was time for the second leg game against Dnipro um, we restored a bit of pride <laughs> not really uh, we got battered in this game. We managed to cling on for a nil-nil draw, which didn't really help because we were we were already 3-0 down. As you can see, we got four shots on goal, none on target. Scoring goals was a real, real, real issue at the, at the start of the season. And it's pretty obvious because, as you can see, that's, what, five games, one goal scored, and then, like, what, 11 conceded. 
brilliant. Admittedly, we'd managed to shut out both Rangers and then Dnipro, albeit Dnipro had one shot target, so it wasn't that difficult. We then continued our run of keeping shutouts with a 1-0 victory over Inverness Cali. Uh, Alan Gow netted on 40 minutes, and that gave us the three points there. We got another clean sheet, which is good. We've started to keep the goals out. Ogun Soto uh, scored after nine minutes, and then Jason Scotland scored after halftime. Got us in three points. Uh, so it was fine if we weren't scoring as many goals as long as we weren't conceding. But unfortunately, we were bound to concede at some point or another. This Aberdeen game was mega frustrating. Jason Scotland scored after 69 minutes. It looked brilliant. We were sailing, going to be cruising to another 1-0 win, another three points. We already had nine points in the league, which after getting battered 5-0 and 3-0, it was going to salvage an okay start to the season. Then the inevitable happened. Aberdeen scored in the last minute and earned a point. First game against Aberdeen, Aberdeen won the league. First game against them, and we drew. Having only conceded one goal in five games, we then proceeded to concede five goals in one game, lost 5-1 to uh, Kilmarnock, five of their players scored. Uh, ben Burgess netted a penalty on 37 minutes, but, but by that time we were like 2-0 down, so didn't make a huge difference. Following this, we then had a 2-2 draw against Livingston. We went 1-0 down, but then Willie McLaren came up trumps and managed to net two penalties within five minutes of each other, uh, which was good. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't hold on, and Graeme Holmes netted an equaliser on the air mark, and that was it. Game over. We then lost to Hibbs. Uh, we were 1-0 up after Patrick put us 1-0 up in the 8th minute. They then went and scored two goals, and uh, we lost that game. And then we proceeded to lose the TV game against uh, Dungeon United, as you can see. Mega frustrating, because we were trailing for most of the game as they scored in the 12th minute, but then Patrick... Uh, equalised for us on 83 minutes and then Alex Williams went ahead and netted a winner on 90 minutes. Fantastic. Good job, guys. We then played Dunfermline uh, at home. Jason Scotland scored a winner with 12 minutes to go. Fantastic. Got the three points from that game. We then drew 0-0 with Hearts, which considering the fact we got cream 3-0 last time, this, this was made out to be a good result. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, in this case, 0-0, good result. Uh, we then went on a losing streak, uh, and a known scoring streak. We lost 3-0 uh, to Rangers in the Cup, which was fantastic. Uh, we then lost 3-0 to Rangers in the League, again, brilliant. And then we lost 3-0 to Celtic in the League. So, back-to-back -back games against the old firm doesn't really uh, lend itself to optimism, I guess you could say. But as you can see, that's four games, no goals, nine conceded. Uh, things got better. Ha, JK, no they didn't. We lost 3-1 away to Cali. Patrick got our goal on 89 minutes, but by that time we were already 3-0 down, crashing to yet another defeat. So as you can see, the previous eight games had yielded just four goals for us. We'd conceded a barrel load against the good teams. Uh, okay, we kept a few clean sheets, but... It's not good. We're not scoring. How did we turn it around? Well, we didn't turn it around in this game. This was uh, probably the lowest point of the season. My team's morale was at an utter low. Motherwell went ahead on 56 minutes through Billy Mehmet. Now, Motherwell were bottom of the league by a country mile. I don't think they'd even won a game at this point. And we started trailing to them, which was, like, at that point, I just wanted to quit. I wanted to rage quit, forget about the save, pretend it never existed. So I think at that point, we just went for a 4-2-4 all-out four, all attack formation kind of thing. Thankfully, with 12 minutes to score, Nigerian striker Patrick <laughs> pulled uh, equalised. Uh, before Kevin Miller scored his one and only goal of the season, which proved to be vital uh, to put us ahead two minutes later. And then Scott Wilson made sure of victory on 86 minutes. And we got uh, our first three points in a long time against bottom of the league from a losing position. We then kept that up with a 4-0 victory over Kilmarnock. Now, I did change the formation for this game. What did I change it to? Well, this was the formation that I changed it to. Originally, I'd been using this... Now, the two players, Brennan and Constanti, they'd both been signed as wing-backs, and I was going to use them in this formation, but this didn't seem to be working as well as it had done in pre-season. I also used this, which I'd basically used for the entirety of the save. Uh, I was using 4-4-2s. I threw this in a, f a few times, but then I realised what we really needed was goals, and who gets goals better than strikers? So I went and played three strikers. Did pose a bit of a problem, because we only had, I think, about five strikers, or four stri out-and-out strikers, but it seemed to work. As you can see, we... Uh, Managed to beat Kilmarnock 4-0. Alan Gow got a double on 2 minutes and on 27 minutes. Uh, Constanti then netted a penalty in 32 minutes. And Jason Scotland completed the scoring 2 minutes later. He then unfortunately got injured, um, but 
we still got the three points, which was the main thing. So all of a sudden, we went from scoring, what, four goals in about eight games to scoring seven and two. It's just a, a complete turnaround. And we kept it up. This was a very interesting game. So we were away to Aberdeen, who were top of the league. They were on an unbeaten run of about 12 games or something. And I decided to go for the 4-3-3. Went for a very attacking formation away from home. I don't know why I did it. I just thought, we might as well. I want goals. So I went for it. And thankfully, Alan Gow netted the winner on 28 minutes. So we ended their unbeaten run. We were the only team to beat them for most of the season. We then went and lost to Livingston 3-2, which wasn't that great, given the fact we were 2-0 up at one point. Zoltan Kiss and Jason Scotland both scored inside the first uh, half hour. Then, unfortunately, they scored on half time and then twice in the second half, including a winner with six minutes to go. So that wasn't so good. And I think I was playing a 4-3-3 at that point. I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. Uh, but it was all good because in our next live TV game, we played Dungeon United, who did take the lead through Aaron Conway. But it was all good because Jason Scotland came through, netted a hat-trick, including two penalties on 58 minutes, 63 minutes, and on 71 minutes. And that gave us a uh, much-deserved three points from that game. I'm not sure if it was deserved. The penalties might have been controversial. Um, but three points in front of a TV audience. We then went into the Scottish Cup third round. So obviously we've been knocked out of the League Cup in the third round by Rangers, unfortunately. I did think we would get past the third round because Hearts are a strong team. But we managed to win 3-2. Uh, Jason Scotland scored our opening goal. Uh, Kevin Kyle then equalised for Hearts then in the second half after the hour mark Ben Burgess and our Nigerian striker Patrick they netted to put us two goals in front of Hearts to make it 3-1 Callum Elliott pulled one back won 73 minutes but too little too late and we went through to the next round I was a little bit like kind of I wish this was the league and not the cup kind of thing but a win's a win did wonders for the morale um, unfortunately, this didn't do wonders for the morale. Uh, we lost two early goals to Dunfermline. Patrick, our Nigerian striker, did pull one back in 77 minutes, but too little too late. We then drew 2-2 with Hibernian. Uh, great performance, not really. Uh, our Nigerian striker, Patrick, kept up his good form with his third and fourth goals in uh, four game, in three games sorry, to put us 2-0 up. And then Gary O'Connor went and matched his goals tally to draw level uh, to draw him's level in the second half. So two points dropped, um, but then a point gained. We drew with Rangers uh, at home. Uh, Bob Malcolm, we got battered this game by the way. Bob Malcolm scored for Rangers uh, on 55 minutes, but then Ross Wallace scored his only goal of the season. He barely played this season. Uh, this season actually but he scored three minutes later to give us a share of the spoils. Then for worst game of the season, I know we've had some pretty bad games, losing 3-0 to Dnipro, uh, 5-0 to Celtic, 3-0 to Hearts. Uh, we lost 2-1 to Airdrie. Uh, we battered Airdrie for most of the game. Unfortunately, our strikers couldn't get their shots on target. And of all players, Michael Moore came back to haunt us once again, and he scored two goals. Jason Scott did get us a goal in 40 minutes. It's slightly better than the 4-0 defeat we suffered against them last season, but 2-1 isn't great. We got knocked out of the Scottish Cup, so we were no longer able to defend the trophy, because, of course, we won it last year, for those that didn't know. Also, Airdrie did win the Scottish First Division, which is going to be very interesting for next season. I really hope we don't get trounced by them in the league. So, we put the Scottish Cup game behind us. Oh, wait, no, we didn't. We lost 2-1 to Celtic uh, in Glasgow. Um, they scored twice, and Jason's got pulled them back on 83 minutes, and that was it, basically. <laughs> Nothing much to say about that. Then, remember my wish? Remember my wish that this was a league game? The Hearts um, Scottish Cup game? I, I wish that was a league game. Well, it was. We managed to win 4-3 against the Hearts in uh, probably the best game for the neutral all season. Uh, Stephen Presley scored early uh, after two minutes, but Jason Scott equalised on 19 minutes. Uh, however, that was short-lived as Graham Weir put Hearts back in front five minutes later. Uh, our Nigerian striker Patrick replied instantly on 26 minutes. And then Alan Gow put us in front for the first time in the game. Then, with just over 20 minutes to go, Mark De Vries netted. He usually nets against us, but he netted his customary goal to draw Hearts level. Alan Combe got injured. Alan Combe's the goalkeeper. I didn't realise this. If I had, I would have probably instructed long shots from every player um, because they had to they went down to 10 men and had to put an outfield player in goal it didn't matter because 5 minutes to go Ben Burgess netted a penalty for us 
and we got the three points from Edinburgh which was fantastic and put to bed that 3-0 defeat earlier in the season. Uh, we followed that with a 2-0 victory at home to Cali and Nielsen netted on 25 minutes and then Gary Brady netted on 38 minutes and we managed to get the three points from that game. We then trounced Motherwell 5-0. No surprises there. They are still bottom of the league. Our Nigerian striker Patrick got two goals. He scored on 33 minutes and the last minute of the game. Uh, then Jason Scott netted a hat-trick on 36 minutes or on 44 minutes and on 62 minutes. And that gave us... Uh, a much deserved three points against a struggling Motherwell side who did eventually get relegated from the Premier League. Then we were up against top of the table Aberdeen uh, again and again we beat them as you can see 2-1. Very interesting game. Ben Burgess netted after a quarter of an hour. Then Jason Scott put us two goals ahead on 62 minutes and we looked to be cruising. At this point again I was playing a 4-3-3 because I figured the 4-3-3 might do well against the 3-5-2 the that Aberdeen were playing. Unfortunately our Nigerian striker Patrick got sent off. Ah I remember I actually cautioned him for this. I, I gave him a warning for getting sent off and he took a huff. That was two warnings he received. One for bad performance, one for a red card. Both of which were justified and he took a huff. Thankfully it didn't make a difference in this game uh, despite the fact Aberdeen pulled one back uh, we held out for the three points which was good and dented their title hopes. I also want to point out that one game close to the end of the season I played uh, our Nigerian striker Patrick out wide on the left hand side which is out of position. He played badly I didn't caution him for that because I knew that I played him out of position so it was my fault but whatever he's just ungrateful I guess. Uh, we lost 2-1 to Komarnik, someone scored an own goal against us <laughs> to hopefully spark a miraculous comeback but no such thing happened and we lost 3-1. We then pulled things together, beat Livingston 2-1, Jason Scott scored on 46 minutes just after half time, Alan Gow put us two goals in front and thankfully we only conceded one goal after that. This guy scored with 90 minutes to go but there was no repeat of the previous game of the season and we held out for the 2-1 win. Following this 3-2 TV victory over Dungeon United which was good. Jason Scott scored after 14 minutes. Unfortunately United levelled but then we went back in front through Scotland or oh, through Burgess I should say uh, and a penalty on 38 minutes. Uh, but then we went two goals ahead. Jason Scott scored in 39 minutes. United could only reply with a Chris Innes uh, goal and that was it. We got the three points held out for the rest of the game. So at this point we're kind of climbing the table. This is getting towards the split in the league. We're climbing the table. We're in the top, uh, I would say, well we can have a look at it here. Just before the split, which the split is here. As you can see, we were kind of in the bottom half for a lot of the season. But finally, we're up into the top half now and jostling for position with... Uh, the other teams. After the United game, there's our customary defeat to Dunfermline. Not much to be said there. That was a pretty bad game, actually. But then we trounced Tibbs 4 0, which was fantastic because we had to beat them to get in the top six. Uh, Jason Scotland scored after one minute. Always good when you get a goal in the first minute. Alan Gow then scored a double after half time on 47 and 66. And then Zoltan Kiss netted on 77 minutes to uh, give us a 4 0 win. Fantastic. Um, and that was actually the first time in the season we'd actually had a positive goal difference because obviously we'd been trounced 5 0 and 3 0 at the start of the season to give us a minus 8 goal difference after two games. It took us like 30 odd games to recover our goal difference. And as you can see, we did finish in the positives, which was good. So the SPL split. Uh, we had lost to Dunfermline, which put our top six future in doubt because they were just behind us and then they beat us and they went in front of us. But because we beat Hibs and they lost the game, we ended up in the top top six. They did get more points than us but they were in the bottom six so we finished ahead of them. That's the second season in a row that's happened. They should have finished fourth actually. Anyway, <laughs> so top six games went really really well. Drew 0 with Rangers, not much to be said. They dominated the first half, we dominated the second half. Draw was a fair result. Next was a 2-0 win over Hibs. Alan Gow scored in 27 minutes and then Jason Scotland netted in the final minute to give us a valuable three points. At this point I was really wanting to get a European place. Um, I didn't really know how that would work. I didn't mind getting in the Intertotal Cup because at the end of the day it's a European competition uh, so I think I was going for fourth place or third place at this point so went against Tibbs, did wonders for our chances but even better than that we thrashed Celtic 3-0 in Glasgow. They took the lead on 19 minutes as is customary um, but then Jason Scott equalised five minutes later uh, and then with 20 minutes remaining, or inside the last 20 minutes, Jason Scotland netted a winner on 73 minutes. 
And then he netted again to complete his hat-trick. With a minute to go, it was uh, probably the best game of the season, best performance. Uh, we did get battered, as you'd see. Oh, actually, they didn't do that well. Two shots on target. I'd be raging if I was their manager. Um, but yeah, we were well worth our victory in the end, and that gave us another valuable three points. So we then drew with Aberdeen, uh, and there you go. We were undefeated against the league leaders all season. Didn't lose to them at all. Almost lost to them here. They scored two goals that uh, was sandwiched by half time. They then lost their discipline and gave away two penalties, which were duly scored by Jason Scotland and Ben Burgess. Uh, and as a result of the second penalty, their player, Darren Powell, got sent off. We scored two goals in the last 15 minutes, both penalties, but that gave us a valuable point. Uh, unfortunately, we were, I think, in fourth at that point, and I was relying on the old firm beating the two Edinburgh teams, and that would keep us in fourth place. Unfortunately, both the old firm lost to the Edinburgh teams, and that put us back in fifth place. So I was very, very gutted about that. The one time I wanted the old firm to win, and they just com capitulated. I have no idea why. Uh, so that put a lot of onus on our final game against Hearts. If we won and Rangers lost, we could finish third. Unfortunately, we drew. Could have been a lot worse. Mark De Vries scored his customary goal against us. Alan Gow equalised on the hour mark and that was about it, really. We got the uh, we got the point. We didn't really push. It was a pretty drab game, to be honest. A real end-of-season tie. We did have 21 chances, though, which is a very, very disappointing total to see, especially given the fact we only got six on target. And although we had overturned the problem at the start of the season, which was goals, we weren't getting any goals, really. Uh, we turned that around, as you can see, with... Uh, a load of goals in the second half of the season. Only two games we failed to score in. We're still getting a lot of chances, but we're not converting them. Um, but I did find a lot of the opportunities my players had was just to shoot from distance. So hopefully I can rectify that, although I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if the 4-3-3 is something that can sort that out. But either way, it gets us goals, which is the main thing. And yeah, that was the end of the season. As you can see, we finished fifth. Now the rules do state qualification for Europe Top two teams qualify for the Champions Cup, so that's Celtic and Aberdeen. Team in third qualifies for the UEFA Cup, which would be Rangers. And then team in fourth qualifies for the uh, Intertotal Cup, or the Eurovaz, which would be Hearts. We just miss out, but it did have a uh, brackets, which is depending on winner of Scottish Cup. Scottish Cup was won by Rangers, who are already in European competition. So what I think that means is the placings get bumped down, basically. So Hearts are going to the UEFA Cup, and we will hopefully go into the Intertotal Cup or the Eurovaz. We will have a bit of European football to look forward to next season. Uh, the winner of the Eurovaz, or the winners, because there's three winners, the winners go into the UEFA Cup, I believe. So if we get through, what was that, like one, two, three, four, five, five rounds. <laughs> if we get through five rounds of qualification somehow, we should end up in the UEFA Cup, which would be good. Um, but even just a run to like the semis or something would be good. Um, but it's too like a competition. It was discontinued in real life because it was pretty pointless. But for for me, it's it's another trophy worth going for. Be cool to to uh, get close to winning something like that. If not to win it, I'm I'm kidding. I, I don't think we've got a good chance depending on what players we sign. But we'll see. Especially if we lose our two main players, we've probably got no chance. That's like 81 goals in just over 100 games. That is fantastic. Like he's just such a player. But yeah, he'll probably he'll probably be leaving. Same with Zoltan Kess, he will probably be heading on a free transfer. He's only been here three years as well. Been a pretty consistent performer. Nobody wants him, so there's a chance we might be able to offer him a contract. Um, but yeah, that is that. One last thing I should add is that we upgraded our training facilities to top facilities plus youth academy, which is good. So hopefully we'll be getting some good young players into the team. I I'm, I'm, I wonder, is my profile, am I Nash? I'm still local. It still says I'm a local manager, which is not true. I've won a national cup. I should have a national reputation. And these are my stats and stuff. Preferred formation, 4-4-2. Um, I think not. Uh, yeah, the game's not very developed, shall we say, but it's still a good game. Anyway, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully I'll be back again for us to prove Brian Loudrup wrong. Um, if not, maybe another version of Football Manager, who knows. Till next time, thanks for watching. Have a good day. See you later.